Good day. It's my privilege to be part of uh, COVID 2021, give you an update of the status of hepatitis B vaccination for healthcare workers as opportunities to improve hepatitis B prevention and advance progress toward hepatitis B elimination in Africa. Over the course of my presentation, I'll give you an overview of the risk of hepatitis B transmission in healthcare, what are the strategies for achieving high hepatitis B vaccination coverage among healthcare workers, recommendations for vaccine uh, 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 vaccination of this uh, population, and future opportunities for integration with COVID-19 uh, vaccine uh, vaccination. Hepatitis B virus is a blood-borne virus readily transmitted in healthcare settings, posing risk for healthcare workers and for their patients. Uh, transmission occurs through um, percutaneous exposures, through punctures uh, of intact skin, and exposures of mucosal membranes to um, contaminated blood and other body fluids. Uh, hepatitis B virus uh, remains infectious for up to seven days outside the body, uh, increasing a risk for transmission. Transmission risk also uh, is related to the uh, viral load of the source patient, um, as indicated by their uh, E antigen status, as shown here. Um, hepatitis B vaccine was licensed uh, uh, in, beginning in 1982. And studies around that time uh, documented high prevalence of hepatitis B among healthcare workers in various occupations and how those prevalences exceeded that of the general population. Healthcare workers uh, whose occupation uh, placed them um, uh, in uh, contact with blood and other potentially infectious body fluids uh, have the highest risk of hepatitis B uh, transmission. A very informative study uh, was conducted in the 1980s and early 1990s at San Francisco General Hospital, where a cohort of healthcare workers were followed and, and periodically tested to document transmission of bloodborne viruses. This study showed the extraordinarily high rate of hepatitis B virus transmission in comparison to that of HIV and hepatitis C. Um, again, illustrating the, um, the, the need for protecting healthcare workers from uh, hepatitis B infection uh, with vaccination being the centerpiece of those protective efforts. <clears throat> uh, this body of evidence uh, led to the first recommendations for, uh, uh, for hepatitis B vaccination of healthcare workers in the early 1980s by CDC for the United States, where they recommended um, a three-dose vaccination series for all healthcare workers whose occupation placed them in with potential for exposures to blood and other potentially infectious body fluids. Uh, the completion of that uh, three-dose vaccine series should then be followed by post-vaccination testing to document the protective level of hepatitis B uh, antibody and revaccinate if that protective level is not achieved. Now, we have a growing population of persons who were vaccinated in early life. As they enter healthcare education and employment, uh, their level of protection needs to be assessed. And if they fall below that level of protection, they need to be uh, revaccinated. Um, and, and these CDC recommendations um, mirror the recommendations from WHO. Uh, the, the, the program in the US gives you an example of a national program. Uh, the US government uh, mandates that all healthcare employers offer hepatitis B vaccination within 10 days of a healthcare worker starting work. The healthcare worker refuses vaccination. They have to sign a statement uh, to that fact. Um, there are various measures to uh, make um, hepatitis B vaccination very convenient for the healthcare worker and for that vaccine to be available at no cost. When you look at, look at the acceptance of hepatitis B vaccination among employees, of uh, those that have direct patient contact, uh, uh, those that have high levels of education, previous tested for other bloodborne viruses have um, the highest likelihood of accepting hepatitis B vaccination. And interestingly, interestingly uh, also those employees that have previously accepted seasonal flu vaccination also are more likely to accept hepatitis B vaccination, an opportunity I'll return to in a moment. Uh, that said, only about uh, two out of every three healthcare workers have been vaccinated against hepatitis B in the United States. 
with various differences by uh, type of employment as shown in the bar graphs, and that these uh, levels uh, continue to fall below uh, the national goal of 90% vaccination coverage. Um, now, um, hepatitis B vaccine of healthcare workers should be part of a larger employee safety program that uh, is also managing exposures to uh, hepatitis B <clears throat> uh, in the workplace. Um, for healthcare workers that have been previously vaccinated, if they have a documented level of protection of hepatitis B antibody, either found immediately after vaccine or uh, immediately after that exposure, uh, they're fully protected. If they fall below that level of protection, they need to receive a, a, a dose of hepatitis B immune globulin and be uh, revaccinated. Now let's turn the situation in Africa. Uh, a recent uh, meta-analysis of, um, of um, studies in Africa uh, estimate that about one in every four uh, healthcare worker in Africa uh, has uh, received hepatitis B uh, vaccine. Uh, with large differences in the countries identified in this meta-analysis. When you look at the reasons for not receiving vaccine healthcare, uh, among healthcare workers, the lack of, uh, of availability of that vaccine in the workplace is the most common reason for that healthcare worker not receiving vaccine. Uh, safety concerns that are actually uh, uh, infrequently reported uh, among uh, participants uh, in studies identified in this meta-analysis. Looking at um, two studies in individual countries, a recent study in Ethiopia, again, found that about 20% uh, of healthcare workers uh, have been vaccinated against hepatitis B uh, infection with large differences uh, regionally around the country. When they looked at factors associated with hepatitis B vaccination, healthcare workers that were male that had only been working for a relatively short period of time had lower levels of education were the least likely to have been, uh, to have received hepatitis B vaccine. Those that have gone infection, that had received infection control training had a threefold higher likelihood of receiving hepatitis B vaccination, as did those that had a previous history of hepatitis B exposure, uh, most probably in part because of that uh, injury management um, 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 that I, um, report, that I uh, reviewed earlier. Um, an earlier study in Kenya um, um, assessed health co workers working in hospitals and in primary health care to look at their uh, risk of hepatitis B infection and the feasibility of expanding the infant hepatitis B vaccination program to provide vaccine uh, for health care workers. This study found that about 30% of health care workers reported at least one occupational exposure posing risk for hepatitis B transmission or about one exposure per year per healthcare worker. 41% uh, had evidence of previous hepatitis B infection, anti-core uh, positivity. Only 62% agreed to uh, blood uh, testing, uh, reflecting some concerns about stigma. 13% had previously received hepatitis B vaccination, but among those not vaccinated, 88% started the three-dose vaccination series reflecting high acceptance. So the takeaways from this study, occupational exposures are frequent. Um, high acceptance of hepatitis B vaccine can be achieved among healthcare workers and that the infant immunization infrastructure uh, can be the foundation of providing hepatitis B vaccine uh, for healthcare workers. And the concerns regarding hepatitis B testing uh, should be kept in mind in the future. And this particularly is true for Africa because um, um, it's a high endemic area for hepatitis B, and that the rate of um, hepatitis B infection is high among healthcare workers in large part because of exposures in earlier life uh, when they were <clears throat> and, and not receiving vaccination to protect those earlier exposures. Uh, this was a study looking at regional differences around Africa showing um, uh, different rates of, uh, in, in, of infection among healthcare workers. And this is also true in individual studies. So the benefits of pre-vaccination testing that can reduce cost of the program and identify uh, healthcare workers who are, um, have chronic hepatitis B infection and need to be referred for care and treatment. 
However, that really needs, this testing needs to be part of an overall uh, vaccination program with sound policies, um, and, uh, no additional cost for employees, and concerns regarding stigma and consequences of uh, employee employment uh, being addressed uh, and, and minimized as risk uh, for knowing your zero status. Now, turning to opportunities for um, integration with other vaccines, um, we're in the midst of the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We now have a vaccine that's in various stages of uh, rollout around the world, uh, but in almost every country, healthcare workers are a priority population to receive this vaccine. And we're, uh, we're developing a, a collection of lessons learned of how to roll out that vaccine. As you can see in the box, the predictors of of um, accepting COVID-19 vaccine among healthcare workers mirror those that we um, found for hepatitis B vaccination. Uh, interestingly, again, flu vaccination uh, uh, acceptance earlier predicts the healthcare workers that will also accept COVID-19 vaccination. And likewise, employees that are accept COVID-19 vaccination are most likely to accept flu vaccine. So it really raises the question, does this pose an opportunity to integrate hepatitis B vaccination with COVID-19 vaccination to improve hepatitis B vaccination coverage? Uh, that evidence base uh, needs to be developed. Uh, as the start of that, uh, the coalition um, uh, in collaboration with partners uh, in Kenya um, are developing a study to, to look at the um, cost effectiveness and uh, um, and acceptance of simultaneous administration of seasonal flu vaccination uh, with hepatitis B a vaccine to see if the uh, coverage of both of those vaccines are improved uh, when that delivery is integrated. And Dr. Henry Najaguna uh, of the coalition is leading the development of this uh, study um, and you'll be hearing from him uh, in our program. Um, so in summary, healthcare workers in Africa can benefit from hepatitis B vaccination followed, following, uh, followed by testing to document protection as part of employee and safety programs. Uh, testing can be part of a hepatitis B vaccination program for healthcare workers, but um, issues such as stigma and other, uh, other risks need to be addressed so that that testing benefits the um, um, healthcare worker. Hepatitis B vaccination is inadequate. We know uh, some strategies of improving uh, to improve coverage, and those strategies need to be broadly disseminated so that uh, coverage improves. There are opportunities to integrate um, hepatitis B vaccination uh, with COVID-19 vaccination, and that and we need to begin to develop that evidence base uh, so that that integration can be brought about. Um, um, and so that um, can improve hepatitis B vaccination coverage um, as we continue to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much for your time and look forward to your uh, questions and comments.